Okay, hi, Connie here, and I am really excited for this interview today. Uh, we have Paula Van Horn with us, and Paula and I, as we got on here, we were talking that we go way back, like, you know, two or three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, times 10. We, we've known each other for a long, long time, and um, so I'm really honored and excited for her to share some of the things that she does. I think that we'll all learn a lot. So, Paula, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Connie, for having me. This is so much fun. It's always oh. fun to share and it's oh, fun good. to learn from one another. So thank you. Absolutely. I love that we can have a community that's not competitive, but we share and support each other. I love that. Yes. Okay. So, so how long have you taught group piano lessons? I started group about 25 years ago and I, this was before cell phones even. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, a lot of in-person connection and whatnot. And I, I started it because the old pianos techniques, some of some of your listeners, your watch will will um, still I have, have those. You have one because they last forever. They're just the best. And they were created by Panasonic and then Panasonic decided to drop the piano line and hang on to the organ line. And uh and so, yeah, I still have everything I have is still techniques, but- You still have your techniques? I couldn't- All, I couldn't all of these behind me are techniques. What's that? I couldn't find parts to replace them as things, a couple of things went wrong. So I had to move on. That is tricky. And every once in a while, you'll see them on Marketplace or whatever, and you can get a, a good, people don't know what they're letting go of. They're, so grab they're, one if you yes. see one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they're just awesome. good quality. So I, I, I got a hold of them because I was doing a lot of composition and I was raising a family and, and as we all know, creativity doesn't come in the middle of, of busyness. It comes when everything's quiet and the kids would be in bed and I couldn't go pound things out on the piano and a digital piano made sense. I could put the headphones on and start working. Yeah. And so that's where I got introduced and fell in love with the record button, which I tell my students, that's the most important button on the piano. That's the best teacher ever is to have them record themselves and play it back. Inevitably, you'll hear them say, oh, let me do it again. I can do it better. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. Which is um, a better teacher than I can be, you know, just listening to yourself play. So I use that record button a lot. But as I got to know the digital, then I could see, wow, I've got to pass this on to the students and and got into the concept of group teaching. And back then I did four in an hour because I have a small home and I have a small space. It's just a bedroom converted to a studio. There's a thank goodness a back access uh, separate from the house so they don't have to trounce through the home so they can come into uh, the hallway and they wait there on a bench and then they all come in uh, but right now I've shifted and I just do three I think we all is there's such a learning curve with everything we do and we're good at curving <laughs> as teachers. and so at this time in my life I do three I just have three in a group it's an hour-long lesson and um and it, and it works really well i um i when they come do you want me to just say how well how i'm we... gonna pause right there because i really like how you said that your area is really small and mm -hmm. um, you don't need a big grand thing and you don't need 12 pianos and you don't need a lot of stuff you can start where you are and another thing that you said is it, it, it will evolve over time. So don't try to get everything perfect before you start. Because like you said, you started with four, now you're at three. Some go the other way. They go to bigger groups. I mean, you'll find it's your, fine. Your yeah. little, you know, corner, your little niche of this is working for me and this isn't. And uh, I love both of those concepts that you said. Yeah, I, I think the key is, is it working for you? And if it's not, there's so many options available. I do have a separate room with an acoustic piano and I love that. And so I teach um, a, a combo. I have group classes and I have private individual classes. And as they get a little bit older, then I get them on that on the in their private lesson on the acoustic piano. And we'll come to, we call this the music room. And we'll come to the music room when we want to create. The digitals are the best for creating and so that that's what we that's how we use it in private okay so you said you do a combination there's some private lesson and some 
group lessons. So does one student get both a private and a group? No, it's one or the other. Okay. That's an idea though. Someone could do that if they wanted to. I do have some private students that come twice a week. They'll come once for their lesson and then they'll come back for just for theory because they want to move ahead or just to practice with me because they want to. Those are real studious, more advanced students uh, that want to do that. But that's both private. Yeah. Wow. So you have like both of these things going. That's how smart you are. <laughs> you know, no, it's because I like variety. I, you know, I don't like to get stuck in a rut. <laughs> so. okay. okay, well, yeah, you, you got that then. All right, so, <laughs> so um, walk me through, especially, I mean, especially the group side of things. Like you said, your lessons are an hour, and mm -hmm. you talked about you didn't need a whole lot of setup, but um, what happens in that hour? Okay, sure, yeah. When they come, I'll, I'll, I'll tip my camera real quick here. You can see there's a piano there, two behind me, and then the, the the whiteboard on the wall. And what you don't see on the other wall is all the the bookcase filled with all the books and uh, and then shelves with with theory games on it. And where I'm sitting right here, because this is just a a standard bedroom, this home is I don't know 50 years old. I took the closet doors off the closet and found a, a, a desk that is, um, it actually is what it is, is a kitchen nook that, that, you know, those higher that they put baskets in for fruit and whatnot. It's a really nice desk, and it, but it's the perfect height for a student to work on computer. They're not hunching over and they're, they're, they're sitting just fine at the computer desk and that's where they do their theory. So when they come in, they automatically know, they go to their piano and all the pianos are assigned this to the student and, and so they had the same piano every week um so i because i do both i may be in here with another class and they just wait in the hall till we switch or i might be in the other room teaching a private and finishing that up and they know come right in they know when i come down they're all set up they know um they just want to please and they're all ready to go so um so it's a it's a mix during the day okay i've got a group i've got a private and, yeah. and i see you and like variety i do <laughs> yeah i definitely do okay so, so they come in and start at the pianos they sit at their piano and each piano has a little um a little, I might, I have one here, a little, a little tag. I don't know if you can see this. Um, and so this is two different kids that, that, that come at different times. So you'll see one will, one will, um, so I can get another one. One will, uh, one will start on the computer. Oh, this is the same week. Let's do another one. One will start on the computer and then next one will start on a lesson. Okay. And then the third one will start on, uh, practice so you can see the three so when they sit down they look at that little that little list that's on their piano and I just have those set up for the day and and then one starts to practice they all have headphones on so the first one will be doing their practice while the second one is having their lesson and I do I I don't move them all together on the same pieces. They, they're actually in different method books. I'm Again, I like variety and I like to match the, the books to the students' ability to learn. And some are heavy theory, some are heavy techniques, some are heavy sight reading, or they need more of one or the other. And so I judge that according to which um, book they're in. And sometimes I'll mix match the, the methods even according to the book. So they just aren't all learning learning uh, the same way and kids in groups tend to compare themselves a lot and so and which isn't a bad thing um but it's nice that they're all in their own space uh yeah. learning their own song every now and then if they get it down really good i'll tell everybody okay stop and we'll take the, the headphones off and i'll have one perform for everyone because they've just done really well and that's such a a boost for their ego and and everybody wants to get to that point the teacher says okay stop what you're doing you've got to hear this but they're pieces that they don't necessarily know because they're in, from each other mm -hmm. because they're in different method books does that make sense absolutely i love all that yeah yeah that so sense. so so one is practicing one's getting their lesson and and here's the other thing while you're teaching one student and saying okay you've got it's really important that you count and why do we count and we had this little discussion about counting or whatever it might be i promise you the others are listening <laughs> and 
And so when you get to them, one, two, three, four, <laughs> they're counting. It's great. They learn from each other for sure. Um, and when and they hear you, yeah. On the one that you're doing your their private lesson with, do they have their headphones off? No, we both have a set of headphones. Oh, you both have a set. Of, okay. So the others can be practicing without hearing music okay. or on the computer with headphones. So it, it, with no music or the, or the, the uh, I use that app or uh, iPad for the uh, computer theory. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm teaching one, one's practicing, getting ready for their lesson and one's working on uh, theory on the, on the iPad. And uh, I do use iPad because you can get uh, more than Android and I use the Apple more than uh, Android because you can get so much more available because of the MIDI factor there. And so um, and so I do use that. Um, so their lesson, the first lesson typically goes a little longer and I that threw me at first because I was rigid. Okay, 15 minutes, 15 minutes, because I want time at the end to be able to do a group activity. Uh, typically it's theory related, uh, but you can't, there's, there's just no way I can. One child needs a little, five more minutes, another child is really fast. But I find that first lesson goes longer. And I personally, I think it's because they just haven't practiced it right before you see them. So when you're finished with that first lesson, then they shift. You now go, I move, the kids don't move. So I go to the next student who's been practicing and I start their lesson and they go pretty quick because they've just gone through everything and gotten it ready. And then the one that just had their lesson will go to the computer and they get a break, they get to start working on theory. And the one that's been on the computer now goes to their piano and starts to practice getting ready for the lesson. Nice. So we go through that and then the third portion of the hour, then we shift again. And so the last two had the opportunity to practice first before I hear their their pieces. So their lessons tend to go a little bit quicker. And so the last, once you've gone through everything and they've had fun on the computer and learning with all these fun apps that we have available, then the, the last thing we do, sometimes it's two minutes, sometimes it's 10 minutes, but we do a theory um, game. And of course we all have our toolbox of something to pull out. And I usually base, I don't have a plan to head because I base it on their needs, what I've seen during the day. Uh, or during the lesson time of, of, you know, we need to work a little bit on counting or note naming or whatever it might be and pull out an activity. Sometimes it may be as simple, like if it's a minute left, they just so look forward to this and they oh. leave with smiles. Thank you, Miss Paula. And because they just had fun at the end, but sometimes it's as simple as stand at the door and I'm going to hold up a flash card of a, a note on a staff when I say three, go. And they run as fast as they can to find the key on their piano. Oh. It, it can be just that simple, um, and they get all excited and have fun with each other. It's I think it's important um, to to um, what I'm trying to say. Piano is such a solo instrument, and we all know as groups, this is the joy of teaching group is they get to interact with each other. And when they get to do that theory at the end, it's that much more interacting and it just makes it fun that social aspect makes it a lot of fun. yeah exactly that's the word i'm looking for we are so lucky to have all these you know i didn't i didn't learn this way and i'm sure he didn't either i had a little student he was about six or seven and i was we were talking about how i learned i didn't have these theory books that you guys you didn't have the theory books no we just practiced our notes no well, we did, didn't know theory <laughs> the computer games no did you have the things on the app no he's like I would have found another teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> with that. <laughs> yeah, because we just didn't have these. And even when um, when you and I first started teaching, we didn't have. No, we didn't. Uh, we didn't. I had. We had the acoustic piano, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I remember I I even getting my first digital. Just the first one I ever heard. It was a Technique thing, and it probably was the same one because they came to our UMTA meeting and like showed us and it's like i'm getting one of those that was you know that's awesome oh so cool that's awesome yeah we can do but so I, much with them so i do um have a question when you do your scheduling do mm -hmm. you is it important for you to try to keep them on the same age together yes probably not on the same level right it's more age no. 
No, but close. I like to have them like level two, three, level three, four, level. And I only take them up till about level five. It depends on the student. When they're ready, you can kind of sense, okay, we need to start doing private. We're getting much more and we need to go into a longer lesson just with you. And and um, then you and then I switch to private. Okay. That's not me. It's, I'm just comfortable. Okay, so it's a, like kind of an evolution. They go through that for the beginning part. And then when they're ready, you move them to private only. They actually start with the mini music program. So I start in at ages four, five, uh, and six in a group setting. So they're already used to being together with mini music, which teaches them all the foundation of, uh, of the basic theory. So when they come and start the group class, I don't have to do the individual, okay, this is a treble clef, a bass clef, these are half notes, quarter notes, this is how you count. We don't have to do that. That's already, they've learned all that. So we get to go right into the lesson, which works beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. So you teach that young in the groups. How do you like manage a classroom when, well, I guess you got three to four kids. I do put four to five in the mini music because they don't touch a piano during that time. It's oh. all done. It's a, really age appropriate. They're, okay. they're, it's, it's the singing and the marching and the clapping uh, uh, worksheets and, and writing and learning all that basic theory. Yeah. And that's why you said they've already learned that. So then when they start the actual group classes, you're ready to go. You're ready to go. They learn everything right up to, they know the names of the keys. They learn everything right up to, okay, let's play a song now. And they then they just take off because they have everything. And you, then you can work with their t technique and their fingers because they're not focused on both. What is this? And trying to do the hands at the same time. So it makes it really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The burning question that um, is a kind of a hot topic for a lot of us teachers. Do you do it or don't you? And if you do, how do you do it? What about makeups? <laughs> that is a burning question. <laughs> uh, years ago, I figured out a way that worked for me and for them. And I've stuck with it ever since. So once a month, the last Saturday of each month, I, I have a makeup class. And it's for everybody that missed a lesson that month. And it's up to you to come or take advantage of it or not. And it's only a half hour and it's a group class. <laughs> and typically it's theory. And if I have two different age groups, then I'll do two of them back to back. But, um, but, but I leave it up to the parents. They know that it's there, it's on the calendar. They just need to text me to let me know we're gonna be there so I can plan right. according to who's gonna be there. So. Sometimes you'll have one or two and other times you'll have five or six if it's been a, oh. a heavy winter month and everybody's had colds or whatever has or, 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 or right. snow days or whatever, then uh, then uh, yeah, you have more coming. And if they miss that month, they can't make that Saturday. I just say no problem come next month. And that's it. It's not it's that simple. So I don't I just have that half hour on the last Saturday of the month. And it's probably my most fun class to teach of all month. Really? I actually look forward to it because we're just having fun with theory. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because it, it gives the parents, a lot of parents really appreciate having a makeup because right. I know some teachers, their policy is no makeup since, you know, parents are okay with that. But some parents feel like, you know, they really Way like out. makeup. And so you're giving the parents that option. And then you're also not, just juggling your schedule all around to try to fit right. in makeups. It's just like one Saturday a month. Yeah, for, for a half hour. I don't make them longer. And even the private students that have a 45 minute lesson, nope, it's a group class or they might be the only one, but that's great. Let's work on theory for a half hour. And and I've never, all these years, I've never had a parent complain, never. It's like you say, they're just grateful there's an option there and I leave it totally up to them. I don't send a reminder or anything. They know it's there and text me if you're coming. Yeah, and it's just simplified that for me. So then the fees are just set regardless of any missed lessons. And if they've missed two lessons that month or you know, or three or whatever, um, heaven forbid three, but if they've missed more than one, then come consecutive. I, I let them come, come the following month and you're welcome to make it up. Oh, that's great. I really like that. That's, that's really good. I hope that somebody really loves that and launches something like that. That's a real good idea. I, I think, I think parents like simplicity. I yeah. certainly do. And life gets so complicated. And I think the more, 
simplified we can keep things organized and simplified that's tricky to do in our world yes but this is a simple easy way and uh, i had one of my um, teaching assistants one time a new teaching assistant came on and they were kind of talking she goes you'll really like this it's like organized chaos <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome <laughs> we feel like that sometimes <laughs> Okay. <laughs> How's it working for you? <laughs> we had a lot of students there at a time and we were doing, we had, you know, that's fun. That is too fun. So I, I've never called it that myself, but it does. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you feel that way. You do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah as long as it's organized, I guess. Um, that's, that's the key. <laughs> okay. So um, if you were to give some advice to somebody maybe who is just on the cusp and thinking, I'd really like to do groups because it does kind of scale your time and mm -hmm. there's energy in groups and there's all these fun things that are available. Um, if you had some advice to somebody who's thinking about starting to teach groups, what would you tell them? I would tell them, first of all, to find other teachers and see if you can go and watch first. Oh and then get some ideas of what works for you, what wouldn't work for you. Everybody's space is different. And, and, um, and so whatever's gonna work in your space or your ability to handle, I think I could handle six and I like how they do this and, uh, or nope, I, three's enough or four or five, whatever works, or maybe you want 20, I've got the space, I've got the income to get the pianos, whatever it is. Um, but I would go visit first and get some ideas. Um, I'd even, you know, you see uh, 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 group chats and whatnot, and I would ask questions on those first. And then, I wouldn't go big first. I would dip my toe because that's just me. Uh, I would dip my toe in and and just start small and then build up for there to where you're in your comfort zone. Okay, excellent. That, that's really good advice. And I think with um, today, even if a teacher is teaching in person classes like you are, they might be willing to put up a little Zoom kind of thing. Yeah, about. I. You know what? I still have about a third of my private students that are still online students. Some of them are further away and some of them, personally, I think it's convenience for the mother who's juggling life's busy schedule and she can be right there and still take care of family and whatnot. But these are students that are thriving with online. And, and so I still teach that too, which changes up the variety of the day too. I love it. Um, yeah, yeah. So why not uh, set, a, set a camera in there, do FaceTime or whatever you want to work and, and yeah. have them watch it, yeah. Yeah, um, I've had a teacher that was willing to let me watch one of her classes and I was like, oh, this is so fun. And so it's like, I asked her again today, can I come back again? Oh, I think we learn the most from one another. I really do. Yeah. Um, and our ideas. And, um, so if somebody watches this and goes, oh, I love what you're saying. I want to do that. And they want to contact you with questions. Is it okay for them to contact you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Happy we'll, put, we'll put your email. Um, down in the <laughs> description below so that if they have more questions about how you do it, they can contact you. you bet. Okay, so what resources do you use? You've got books, you had a mini me class, and then what else do you use? Can you tell us about your resources? You bet. And I have them sitting right here so I don't have to run around the room and find them. Uh, so that because I we're, we're I think most piano teachers or music teachers are visual learners and we just remember things when we see it. We're just yes. we're just we're trained that way. Um, so I have this right here. This is Jenny Boster's uh, Muscle Builder books. Okay. And until I, and they're all, there's nothing, um, this is this is level five, there's nothing on staff. It's all visual with the keyboard. And okay. it teaches, they look, there's six books and they learn right from the beginning how to do the five finger patterns and chords. And so technique, I, 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 move into that after maybe 1B on any method book. I'll start. Uh, some of the kids are capable right in the beginning, but most it's 1A, 1B. I'll start them on these. And they start with their scale, their five finger patterns, all their chords, they learn how to invert. Then they go into the scales and they can do all 12. And then they do uh, two octaves uh, before they get out of this. And this is, this is, I've, this is way cool, but it's going to sound odd, but this is before they even uh, can read it on the staff. 
because they're looking at on the picture with the fingers and they get it and they memorize it and they feel it. They get that muscle memory. And I've had such success with it. I've, I've been doing it several, several years now and all the kids do this. Then when they're done with that, I move them into, there's so many you can move them into, but I move them into the Keith Snell um, uh, piano scale or scale skills and uh, just start with level one or level two. Some of them go right into level two. And now they're seeing it on the staff and they're like, oh, and it's just so fun to watch. And, but they've got, they've got it figured out and they just do beautifully. So well, I think we do because we watch those landmarks of the two black keys and three black keys and kind of, that's how we learn the scale yeah. figuring with that. So that makes a lot of sense to do it that way. I, it, it's changed it for me. I've, I've felt bad for years trying to figure out how can I, do better with this because probably like you and many many my age we didn't get a lot of that uh, uh, growing up and I'm thrilled to be able to offer it when they're young instead of uh, uh, an older age. So yeah, I didn't really get into like the whole circle of fifths, all the scales, all the inversions till I started at the university. Like I that was me. I was <laughs> start there when I was like 14. I just started. Oh, high school. Okay. So I was a little young, but that was. That was the first time I'd done all that. I I think we're 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 similar. I never gone to my first theory class in college, and I was I was I was a little bit ticked. I was a little bit angry. I sat around this great big table uh, with the professor, and he starts into theory. And somehow, a lot of these kids knew. I don't know where they got it, but they did. And I'm sitting there going, "What? The chords have names? What? What is this?" It was, I was taught sight reading. That was it. Yeah. You know what, I'm I, grateful. I'm grateful for that. But yeah. I had a, a friend who was um, wanting to go into, told, told the story back when he was going into college, he loved music, jammed on his guitar. So he was going to be a music major and he kind of pictured just jam sessions, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that theory class, right. like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even guitar. Yeah. yeah. So, so on the theory theory note, I'll I'll just do a self plug on this one. Um, this is the mini music program for the. And this one you wrote. Yes, and this is sold through Chose Publishers. Um, you can also get it on Amazon and different places, but you can. They often have sales when they have their their forty percent off sales. We get those in the mail, and you can get get the whole. But it's a, it's a whole course that's all put together with a manual and the whole bit. But it's all theory based, so they're learning this before yeah. they even get to the piano. Oh, and so, so, how many books are there in the? In there's the just there's just one. It's just the basic. And so when they go through the course, they just do this very first. Um, you can see what they're learning here, um, all the basics. So they know all of this oh. before they get um, to, oh, okay. these are the stories and puppets at the end. And this is but, the one that they do when they're littles before they do the actual mm -hmm. class. Yeah, and you can either teach the course itself and they all have their workbooks and, and there's, everything's written. So you don't have to do anything and it all comes with everything you need, all the flashcards, everything. Or if you have already have a program, but you need a good, theory book to go with that just purchase the theory book yeah your music store can order it or or get it on amazon or whatever but okay we'll we'll put the link for that at least on amazon we'll put that link for sure 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 then then okay this is a huge one i i think as we've gotten connected as music teachers around the world through situations like this what you're doing through facetime through through all of uh, youtube and whatnot we have learned, and I tell my kids this, you're, I know it's challenging to learn these notes. I had a hard time learning to recognize the name of the note. And let me just tell you, so do the kids in Italy and the kids in France and the kids in Russia. It doesn't matter where you live around the world. This is this is a tough thing to learn. And we've learned that as teachers of, as we've connected. But I, I, I have a, 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 I'm missing the word here, a, uh, it's a book now. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, I had a bunch of sheets that I that I created to help them. And I, I learned that they can learn, if we could learn five notes at a time and learn them really well and learn the next five. Often in our method books, we move around to different positions and we've gotten away from saying, okay, go to C position or go to G position, which is great. Uh, let's just recognize the note. But they do play in that G position or that C position. And so I created these sheets that they could learn those notes really, really well. 
uh, and then be able to pass off a song with just those notes and then move on to the next five, learn those really well, pass off a song and then and then hands together and then move to anyway, keep moving until you have from uh, I always call her Grandma G from the low G. <laughs> grandma G because Grandma takes care of everybody. <laughs> but from the low G all the way up to F above uh, tre- uh, high, uh, or the treble C, uh, uh, that F up there. So this is that book that they can get, which is oh. so much fun. I finally put it in a book form because I was tired of um, making copies. Uh, and And so you'll see in here, to start out, they're going to learn the middle C notes. And the first line are the space notes. The second line are the line notes. And then the last two lines, we mix those five notes. So they have to be able to read this. And I find it's really interesting. Some students, if they can just put their hand, this would have been me, if they can put their hand on the keys and you watch the finger, they don't press them down, but just wiggle them. They'll read it faster. It's something with the brain and the connection. But they've got to be able to read all those notes and then it, within a minute and we time them if they can do that you know they they know those five really well and then they've got to be able and they can check that off and then they've got to be able to um, play the notes and without making a mistake and then there's a little song you can see on the next page they've just got to put them together and they check it out and it goes all the way up to to the end where they have to have to name there's a certificate well i won't bore you with that but they have to go i think that's awesome it goes up to all of the bass notes and all of the tricks here here it is so this is what they're playing at the end and all these kids do it if you have adult students this is the best way or a transfer students this book works really well so all my students in that era of okay, I'm still learning the notes, I'm still learning notes. Or sometimes you think they know the notes and then you're teaching them like, what happened? How, you know, because they've suddenly forgotten. And I so- I was just thinking, or, or a review when it comes to- yeah, Exactly, note review is what I call it. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we just need it until it finally sinks in. So the kids all have that. They have their muscle builder book that they work out, their method books. One last thing, if you want it. I do, I do. Okay, so because we're working on digitals, and a lot of our digitals have more than one track that we can record, and so I have music that I've written that they can record the different tracks with different and assign a different instrument to it. So when they have it all recorded, they have a full orchestra. And, and it's they, them. Pardon? It's them playing it's themselves. Self. They can do it themselves, and they work on that. Yeah, and then we save it. Um, but because you have a group, you can also assign a, a different track for each one. And so these are those two groups, and you you can get those on um, on Amazon. And they're just sequencing, and and you can see from from here's one right here. So you can see the different different tracks that they're gonna that they're going to. Um, and um, record or practice, they'll record and then and then at the end they'll have it all. Or if they each individual have a track, then you've got to give them a one, two, ready, go. And and they play together as a group. And uh, it and and they they're from the very beginning, just they know their notes to oh early intermediate. There's some here's here's the very beginning you can see. Yeah, there's some running eight notes. Oh see that one's easier. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. One book is easier. Uh, this is book one is the easier one and book two is is the a little bit more advanced one in here. There's some fun stuff and you can kind of see it's not early advanced. I'd say uh, sorry, did I say early advanced? I would say intermediate. Early, early intermediate. intermediate. Yeah. So that could be like a, a trio or a quartet in a group yeah. class. And if you do recitals and you have that opportunity to have more than one piano or, or digital there, the room is silent. The parents are standing up because the, they, they, they don't see it in the lesson time and they get to see it at the recital. It's yeah. a blast. And all of this just brings the kids together. And that's our goal. <laughs> and to have those memories of that like that, that's, that's a really unique resource. That one is really cool. Fun. It is fun, yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite memories, and this was in at the university when we had this, was the Monster Concert where they had like 15 yes. grand pianos up there. Yes, and in those, we're all that. playing the same thing for the most part, or duets yeah. are the same yeah. thing. In this situation, they're all playing something different, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, on the Monster Concert, there were about eight different parts. Are there? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we all did different parts. Okay. But there was a conductor and everything. 
<laughs> I haven't done that. That so, is cool. That is those cool. Those create really good memories. Those experiences yeah. that you've written a book for. That's, that's I think it, it helps keep the kids um, excited and involved. And it's something new and something. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> like to be, kids like to be challenged as we know and we don't want to over challenge them then 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 we lose them but but having things in our toolbox that we can pull out and say okay this is what we're going to work on now and it's a little bit different from what you know you're, you've been doing in your method but but here's what i always say you have to learn all these scales and all these notes and 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 this stuff that's not always exciting i get that so that you can do the fun stuff <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I I have learned a lot from from listening to you. Thank you so much. That takes us through everything that you explained so well. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. If it helps yeah. somebody, I'm happy, and, and they're more than ha more than welcome to reach out. Happy. Okay. To so you can reach out to Paula, and we're gonna put her links in the description below, so you can get all those goodies. <laughs> All right, thanks again, Paula. You're so welcome. Thank you, Connie. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.